every 10 years I work to improve that guy along. So now I got another brother, and that's to see guys like you, young men like you, go on and do what people say you can't do. How many people have said, you know what?
watch the film. We could not take the film out of the projector and go back to our dorm room and watch film, okay? We went back to our dorm room and we watched All My Children, Miami Vice, Manimal. Y'all can look those up on Google, Google them, okay? All right, and those were shows that were popular, but we were not able to go back to the room to study film. So my answer to my wife was, guess what? We were not as good students of the game because the technology didn't allow us to watch game film anytime we wanted to. Now what do we do? The camera has an SD card in it. You record the game on the SD card. You stick the SD card in the laptop. You upload the game film to Huddle. Little plug there, Huddle. Looking for some endorsements. Huddle puts the film, organizes it, cuts it up, you make the ODK, and coach sends out an email. Guess what? The film is up live on Huddle. This is on Friday night. I know, because I'm the film guy. Everywhere I work, I want to be the film guy. I want to be the first guy with my hands on the film, because back in the day, I couldn't get my hands on the film. Y'all got me? So now, you can pull out your phone, use the Huddle app, watch game film at lunch. Notice I didn't say watch game film during English. You can watch game film sitting in the locker room to prepare yourself. So you have no excuses why you aren't a student of the game because it all starts with the film. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about today, and I'll get into it real quickly, and you're gonna enjoy this, because I had a great time putting this together. So, when you start, yes sir? Okay, one question, guys. Where does the offense start? Where does the offense start? From the backfield. It starts from the backfield. Yeah. It starts from the backfield. The reason why I tell you that is because if you're an offensive guy, pay attention from building from the ground, what he's talking about doing. Yeah. If you're a defensive guy, understand that he's talking about what he's doing, and every offense starts the same way. So you, you as a coach, when I watch film and study film, if I see a team that runs the ball well, I almost guarantee you that that defense stops the run well. Yes. Because that's all they're doing in practice, running the ball. Team that throws the ball well defends the back end better because that's what they get all the time. That's why they become good at it. So when you watch film, it, it allows you the opportunity to understand what they're good at and how they're going to attack you. And when you're a good coordinator, the flexibility is knowing how to take building from the ground up to come in and attack them with play action based on what they think you're going to do. That's a great. That's a great intro, Coach. Thank you. So we're going to talk about building from the ground up. I had Coach Mike Craft. Okay? So we, where are we going to start? Everybody knows we want to run the ball. Defense knows it. Offense knows it. Offense knows it. Defense knows it. But I'm going to talk to my offensive line. We are in control. It all starts with us. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to run the ball. So coach, hit that first slide. Here is something I learned from Jim Marshall, who was my coach at University of Richmond. He was the offensive line coach and the offensive coordinator. And what he taught me to do is that he said, when we build an offense, we start with the run, okay? And we start with a base run. Now this is what you call sequencing. And I believe it's a lost art because I see a lot of, uh, I, I watch a lot of football and I see college, high school. I see a lot of offensive coordinators run plays. I don't see a lot of offensive guys in this day and age sequence the play so that one play builds on another. So look at what we have here. Up in the top corner, we have what? Our base play, all right? Off of that base play, for this example, let's say that base play is inside zone. All right, one of my favorite things to do is run a two-back, 21 personnel, 
I don't call them a tight end. I call them an H. I probably told y'all that story before. The H is split five yards, my favorite formation. Two back in a modified pistol with each back two by two from the quarterback. We run a base play and we run inside zone. More than likely, we're going to run inside zone to the weak side. We're going to do that because that inside zone weak side is going to maximize our double team. And we can work those stacks up. If we run an outside zone, we're going to use our zone rules and use our zone help rules. Okay, so we run that base play. Now off of that base play, there is an option, okay? The option can be off of that inside zone. One back goes on zone, the other back goes in what we call bounce. So it would be inside zone left, bounce right. Quarterback right reaches and rides, reads the defensive end, the defensive end comes up field, he does what, quarterbacks? Where my quarterbacks at? Uh, where my quarterbacks at? Yeah, you need to be sitting in the front row. First of all, come on, bring your chair. Up. Come on, Steve. All right. Quarterback. No, so you can lead. So you can lead is one thing. All right. So reach and ride. The defensive end comes up. I hand the ball off. We run the play. So it's it's up. Give. If the defensive end goes down, we don't have anybody to count for him. I pull. Now I pull, and if it's that bounce motion, my first option is to raise up and throw it to that running back. And so now we got numbers, all right? So that's, our, that's an option. If we're gonna run the base play and we run a reverse, we run inside zone, we run a base inside zone where one back comes across, the other back goes and blocks the defensive end to secure him. Now our reverse might be it might be inside zone left, orbit. So I call one play first. Inside zone first, orbit. Inside zone left, orbit back. The quarterback reaches and rides, opens to the orbit, hands it off, there's your reverse. Okay? Or it can go the other way. Play action. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We run the same offensive play, run play, the base play, and then quarterback reach and ride, and I talked about this last time I was here, his weight goes, he rides with that fake, weight goes to that left foot, I push myself back to set up a pass, now we run our pass game, all right, and then off of that play action, we can have a bootleg pass, we can have a screen pass, and those are options that you build in off of play action, okay, so normally I talk about inside zone, today I was really anxious power at the next slide. Power is the most, the purest play in football. All right? And I told coach that we teach power and counter synonymous because in, when you're running power and counter, everything is the same except for two guys, and I'll explain. All right? First thing we need to run power is we need a double team at the point of attack. Now, guys, my, my business all these years has been language and verbiage. I made a living off of writing. I've also made a living off of speaking and, and communicating a vision, communicating a message from an organization. Okay, one thing we want to do is we all want to speak the same language. So the first thing we need to do is have a double team at the point of attack. Where is the point of attack on power? The point of attack on power is the first down lineman past the center. So if we're running to the right. So guys, gap down back, right? What kind of offense is that? Good, good, good answer. Okay, so we're gonna have a double team at the point of attack. That double team is gonna carry to the first linebacker past the center. Okay, the first backside linebacker. All right, so that means these two guys gonna double. We gotta win that double team. We gotta knock him inside on our track, carry that up to this linebacker. So that's the first thing we need, the double team in the point of attack. The second thing we need is we need for the fullback or H-back or whatever you wanna call him, from here, here, or here, to block that defensive end. In this scenario, 
He does what's called a J-pass. He comes up to the line of scrimmage and then bends back to that defensive end. Okay? The third thing we need is we need for the pulling guard to come around that double team and block the first linebacker, play side linebacker. Okay? Now, here's another block that's real important, and I see teams skip this. This is called the gap inch. So that left tackle, and so what we're doing in power is we're borrowing one blocker from the backside and bringing him to the front side. So what we have to do is cover up for that, that pull. So once that guy pulls, the tackle steps down to the gap, seals the gap, and then hinges back on that defensive end. And the reason is because when you start running power, some team will bring that Mike linebacker and come through that hole and blow the play. So he is there to protect that gap first, then turn back to get it. Because once he comes down and he's here, who's closer to the running play? That guy right there. So that gap end is important, okay? Running back, drop opposite, pace himself, head towards A gap, reading this block here, and his choices are A, B, to C. And if everything gets sealed in here, he'll end up at C gap, get north, and go score. So we run that play. Now the question is, who have we affected on that play? Who has to come up once we do all this? Okay, let's say in a perfect world, we seal all that, we kick, and we run that play. Who's left to make the tackle for the defense? Strong safety, right? Or free safety. Him first, him first. We have a good block here, and a lot of times he'll be the fourth player, so he'll come down and try to beat that block. Y'all hear what I just said? He'll come down to beat that block. Coach in a box has a box read. What's your what's your read, coach? When the box comes in, my first step is back. No, I said reading from a box. I need you to read ahead so I can get to something big. Oh, I'm is that back. guy disciplined? He is at first, but after he sees that run break, he's got to come down and he's got to figure it out. Right. So let's talk real world. That free safety is looking through how many bodies? What is he reading? The hats of the line. Right. Hats up, what does he do? He back. He stay back. When the hats go down and start blocking, now I know what he's taught. He I know what he's taught, but what does he do? He okay, how many steps does a free safety have to take to be out of position? Two, it takes two, he's done. He's done. Coach says two, he's done. Y'all understand that, okay? So we make that box read. Coach, that strong safety, this is that information I'm talking about, that information flow. The uh, DB's coach, I mean the uh, wide receiver coach, or the running back's coach. Coach, that strong safety, he's in there thick, hot, and heavy. He's coming down hard, okay? All right, we know. Coach, I watched that free safety. He even had one backpedal. His first move was forward. Y'all know what I say to the, to the head coach? Get the special team, get the, the uh, extra point team ready. Why? Because I know I got them. And let me show you how I get them. Next slide, coach. Hello. Okay. Pass protection. We have a special pass protection. It's, uh, it's aggressive. All right. So you can go, this is Lobo, because they're going to have slide that way. Stuff, stuff, slide, slide. They can slide here. They got anything in that gap, and they got any edge pressure. You see that? Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. The, the pass is called this post wheel. I like to run it out of this formation because I don't, I don't mirror routes, and I want to keep all eight of these guys entertained in the box. All right? So we would call this, this pass concept, the pit, post wheel, protection, max slide, equals half slide plus two. Here's the two, the fullback and the uh, running back, okay? All right, so now we run the same look. We got to have low hats. Everybody's aggressive. Boom, got to be low, okay? Now that quarterback reach and ride. Let's him go, takes his drop. He's already looking at his safety. So
say to each other? Y'all say, well, what about these corners? I'm worried about that. Coach, your wide receivers coach is teaching these guys how to win. That free safety goes to the right or it comes down. He throws off his first read. We go into the house, score. And for three years at Phillips Bowberry, I ran that the first play of every season. And every time we hit a big play. Okay? All right. So this is what we want to do. Now, how do we know when we're going to have to go to the first film? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to show power first. Go ahead and run it through, and then we're going to start at the beginning. All right, this is Philip O'Berry. We're at Hopewell. We're running power. Okay, let it go. And then we'll talk through it. Go ahead and let it go all the way through. Go ahead and run it back to the beginning. John. Yeah, just let it play, and then we'll run it through all the way. So on this one, we'll play all the way. Okay, play. safeties you get out, coach? Two high safeties, okay? Uh, what's the leverage on those outside receivers? Off or on? Way off. Way off. That tells you something, okay? Big coach wears the shade to the field of the boundary. know what kind of formation we got. All right? So we would call that too high off. So too high refers to the safety. The leverage is off on number one. Off on number one. All right? In the box, I'm going to see, I'm going to count these players right here. So how many we got in the box? We got seven in the box. Seven in the box because we count in two. We have to account for him. All right? So now we go ahead and run the play a little bit and then stop. Stop. Okay? What's the first thing we need on power? Double team. Double team at the point of attack. What's the second thing we need? Run it forward a little bit and stop. Kick stop. Out the we need the what? Kick out, kick out, the, kick end. out the end. Has he, has he thrown a block that's going to end up on ESPN? But it is effective. Why? Because we he J path and we got his butt in the hole. All right, the guard coming around and this coach. This is what I'm most proud of as an offensive line coach. Okay, look at the guard coming around. Where is his eye? Okay, you can if you're a guard and you pull, you can feel the double team, but your eyes need to be where. If your eyes are on the, t the guard or tackle's butt, where are they not? That, that right there, when I saw that last night, I could have jumped in the car and walked in. Okay, because I just, this took me back. So, and we got our gap hinge over here. We lost this gap hinge, but fortunately it's a very good running back. All right? We got guys stalking their block. They're under control. So we're going to get a good play here because we got all the elements. Double team, pull, and then a kick, and then pull, and go ahead and run the play. All right? So now we know why we had a good play. Is everybody in agreement? OK, go back. Now we want to figure out how we're going to eat. OK? Stop for a second. Who did I give defensive backs to? Think, Coach Think. OK. Run the play and stop. Keep going. Stop it. What we got, coach? He 
being nosy, right? Keep being nosy, okay? If y'all don't understand what I'm saying, can you go back to the beginning, tell us to run it again? And guys, you notice we're kind of like inching through film, okay? When you watch film, it's not about volume. It's not about volume. It's about precision when you're watching film. The things that you watch, and you can watch one play 12 times and learn more than if you just speed through two hours of film and you don't stop the film and learn anything. So you can watch one play. That's why we like cut-ups. Because cut-ups, you can go to a specific thing. Okay? All right. So go ahead and run that forward. Everybody's eyes on that safety. Go. Stop. Okay? If we were running a post like I drew up, who is supposed to make that play? Right? Where is he? Huh? His goose is cooked. All right? Now I know. Coach Pinkney said, Coach, that safety's nosy. That safety's nosy. Now what are we going to come back with? That play I just showed you. That play I just showed you. Now you'll see a lot of teams do this right here with the safeties because they go into a robber and they'll bring him down and he plays the middle of the field and he goes to a middle safety position and these guys are off in cover three. Okay, so that's, that's one option. Remember we said we want run, then we want what? Play action, do we have play action? Right? So we got that check mark, go back. Okay, the other thing we said we can do is run screen. All right, one of my favorite screens to run to the one receiver side is a tunnel screen. He does what I call a hover. One step on the snap, dot, 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 back up, turn to the quarterback. Do we have time to throw tunnel screen? Who's the one guy that's gonna play that tunnel screen initially? Look where he is. Okay, is he in the same pot as that guy? Um, is his goose cooked? Because when we throw tunnel screen, he's got to travel. If he's taking two steps back, he got to travel 10 yards and then form up and make a tackle. How many of you defensive guys enjoy uh, have given the offensive play a 10 yard cushion before you make a tackle? You don't do. So his goose is cooked. All right? So one run the play and let's watch this go. Stop. If he would get the ball right now, Who's in a position to make that tackle? Nobody. Plus, the left tackle, if I'm running tunnel screen, is running the sidewalk, so he's running straight down the line of scrimmage. Just in case he makes it all the way here, then when he gets to the end of the, the sideline, he turns up and becomes what? The lead blocker. You got a tackle coming out to be the lead blocker. That guy's probably not 120 pounds soaking wet. Check two. Remember, remember what we had up there, right? We had, and then we go back to the first slide. Okay, so we had second one. We had base, that's covered, right? We're gonna say that for another day. Do we have play action? Okay, all right. Now these should all be in somebody's notes upstairs. So at halftime, if we don't get to it, we can go over it again. Well, remember coach, uh, what that safety is doing, we got play action in our pocket. You know what I mean? Coach, remember those corners are playing off, so we got screen. So we accomplished that. I'm going to say bootleg for another day. Go forward. To the third, second play. All right. Back. Okay, we're running power again. This is a run. We're going to stay with this. I only got four plays, so we can take our time. Go back one more. This is the one. Okay, stop it right before the play. Back it up a little bit. Stop it before the play. Okay, does that formation look similar? Okay, this is our last game of the season. We're in the same formation. Why would I do that? Because you cannot break a tendency until you do what? You have a tendency. So I'm heavy handed in setting up tendencies. I'm setting up tendencies so that everybody who watches my game film has seen that formation. And what do they say 
alert on the sideline. Alert what? Power. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right? And sometimes I stand on the sideline and I yell crazy stuff like, okay, offensive line, let's get that double team. Knowing good as well what? We pass it. All right? So let's run this for them. And it's, I'll tell you when to stop. Stop. It. Okay? What do we have at the point of attack? Okay. I would like for his shoulders to be a little more square to the offensive line. But he's in a good position to do what? Okay. What do we have here? Coach, I'm so proud of this. I hope you're proud of me. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. J Pad, when you kick out, where's his butt? What are they doing here? Who's winning? I talk about wins and losses. Offensive line. When your helmet is below the defensive lineman, guess what? We won. All right? What I also like is the backside track when they pull the cousin to double team. Yes. Look how that pull looks. Cousin to double team, if he comes or not, you take that linebacker seat down. Look, look at this guy. Okay? All right? Now, there's a reason. I told some of you earlier. I'll go through this again. There's a reason I like to use skip pulls. Y'all know what skip pull is? Okay? I go. What happened to my eye? Now, you know why I did that? Because in 1986, we're playing Boston University up in Boston. And I had, it wasn't a pull, but I had like a tackle down, like pin and pull. So my tackle came down on the three, three technique. The fullback didn't get the kick, so I had to sneak around behind the fullback block. And I did it like this. And they had a linebacker, Sam linebacker, standing over there who was a beast. And he saw me coming. And the second my butt cleared the block, he hit me right in my ear, okay? And, and my jaw was like a cash register. Cha-ching. And I played the rest of the game like that. So I learned, I said, okay, well, when I teach this, what I want to teach is, okay, before the snap of the play, my linebacker's 50, 51 in every description I have. I want to keep my eyes on 51 before I get around that double team so in case he's right here, what? Boom, I can pop. Because offensive linemen, we don't allow linebackers to come in our house. That ain't going to happen. You step to that line of scrimmage, you better step correct, okay? So coaches talk about he's hugging, but his eyes, I like for him to be a little more square to the line of scrimmage with his eyes here so he knows, okay, I can get around and run that. I also like this coach, uh, this young man right here, I think that's Kelvin Brim who played it. Uh, Philip O'Berry, one of the best teammates a, team, a guy could ever have, one of the best players a coach could ever coach, and guess what he's doing now? Coach. But he's putting, a, putting in work right here. And this play is only as good, even when we do our job offensive line, that makes the play special. He's going to come up here and get a gun block. That might be Kelvin right there. But we have some guys who can devote it. Because what I told the, the wide receiver, receivers is, if you sell out and block on a run play, guess who's going to eat when we pull it down and throw flags? And they bought into it. Okay? All right, so run that forward. Stop. Look at this. Look at this, Coach. Look at that. Okay? That young man, at the beginning of that year, would not crack an egg with a hammer. Y'all hear me? One day in practice, we had a freshman who whooped him, a scout team freshman who whipped him, I ain't calling any names, who whipped him in practice. All right, I lost my mind, coach. I ran that play eight times in a row in practice. Forgive me, I'm sorry. And I said, we are not going to run another play in this practice until, I ain't calling no names, makes this block. By the end of the year, he was a monster. And you can call anybody who was on that team, that young man right there, in one season, made a leap from being a guy to being a dominant block. And look at that block right there, okay? So rolling forward, through the hole, Eight yard, nine yard game. All right, go back to the beginning, coach. 
I'm going to let you guys help me out. What can we learn from? Oh, let's back it up to nobody's moving. Okay? So when you watch the film, stop right here on this frame. Okay? What our formation is called pistol right. Pistol right. All right? What is the, What do we have safeties, coach? Okay, hold, 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 hold. Quarterback, what we got? Okay, one high safety. All right. All right. What do we got as far as leverage? Uh, uh, we're talking about the outside on a leverage on the number one receiver. In my offense, that's what we have to know. So we will say anything over five yards is all. Understood? So we got one high safety uncovered. Y'all got it? On number one. Got it. Okay. Coach, you do the box count. Box count. How many got in the box? Eight. 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 That's okay. That's called a four four. That's called a four four. Where is that? Uh, strength is to the right offensively. Uh, look like they got the three to the field, coach. Am I right? So what would we call that? The, the field, the uh, strength is away from the formation. So we would call that an under front, correct? Yeah, but they playing even up front. He's they playing, playing even. He playing with two twos. So we got two twos. Two twos and two. That's old school. That's old school. The guy that coached this team played for the Panthers. I thought the four four stuff. Y'all hear me? So you know they were doing some good stuff over there. Um, all right. So now we know that, correct? All right, who are we going to key, Coach Pinkney? Safety. All right, run the play. He looked, he looked un disinterested, didn't he? Yeah. He didn't want to make that tackle, did he? All right, you know what we're going to do with that? What are we are going to do with that? We're going to make him make some tackles. All right, look at the formation of it. And Coach, Coach gets on me because I always play this guy out too wide. I know that's something he only tolerates because he likes me. But my reason for playing this guy so wide is I want him and him to be disconnected. Because I'm going to always run some games here. I'm going to run here to get to some games here. All right? So we're really wide. We're from number to number. All right? So we know that. All right, who's the extra man in the box that can cover him? Okay, let's read in. Go. Okay. All right. Fundamentally sound. What was his leverage, Coach? Running back. So he jumped outside. He jumped outside. Okay. So I come off the ball, and we want to run. Uh, uh, up and under go or something. So I could, as a receiver, I could set that up. I'm watching that. So I know he may, he was playing outside because he'll be the contain. He'll be contained. So I would come up and, and then do this and do what? Go score. Go to the next video because now you will see us eat. So y'all seen all that, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, yep. How in the world did that happen? Run it again, coach, real quick. Look at the field. That was that weekend in Charlotte when we had some kind of tsunami. Okay? All I could do all game was run. So I back it up, coach. So I dropped down into 21 personnel. Now, normally, I told this guy, you don't have to put your hand down. He stuck his, here, I want him to put his hand down because what? I'm hiding, right? Okay. Coach, what, what do we got safety-wise? How many guys are in the box? We had, just set this up, we had success running the ball before this play. Okay? We had success. So what did they do? They didn't come everybody in the box. Okay. So I said on the headset to my head coach, where is he? I don't know. I said, 
I said, hang on, coach. I'm going to run two or three times. Look at, look at second down. So I ran first down. We hit it for two yards. Second down, I put the play action on with that same formation. I just turned right around, and it's got them back on the line. Quickly as possible. 21 personnel, so I'm going to run down, run, play action, because there is no safety. These guys are in the box. That's not safe. These guys are off, so they could be in vertical corners for safety. Don't do that against Barry. They got a tip for me. All right, so run. Now, who's the man confetting this play? Whoops. What running back coach? Have you ever seen a guy so bewildered? That's the that's supposed to be safety. What? Run it again. That's a sick feeling right there, DB. That's a sick feeling. Okay? Let's see what, what caused them to stay there. Go back, coach. Let's watch our hat. Run the play. Go. Okay, as bad as the lowers I could have them, but it was pretty good. And that guy was all conference tight end. I love him like a son. It's a tight end coach in high school. He caught 67 balls for 650 yards. Would you take that any season? And 90% of them were off of play action, hitches with seams on the outside, okay? So y'all get it? From the ground up, run the ball, win the game, hit the big one, score. Go to the next play coach. All right, remember this team? Okay, who to stop? We have run pistol, feather cows come home, pistol pop. Look at their box. How many in there, coach? We can't even talk about safeties, because once again, what? And one thing I know about you defensive coaches is, when we're doing something right, you're going to do everything you can to take it away. So look at the box. I, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotta count now. Alright, because these are not in depth. Nine man box. Okay. What is the coverage out? It's all man. But it's all what? Off man. And the reason you know it's man because who's gonna help him? Zero. That's why it's color zero. Who's gonna help him? Nobody. Nobody. Y'all getting in there? <laughs> yeah, ham and eggs. The chicken involved, but the pig is totally committed. Okay, so let's watch this play through, coach. Y'all know we scored 52, 53 points that night? Because he became an actor, and he would do this stuff. I mean, you see him swagger? That's enough, okay? And it worked because somebody believed this was a run. Look at that guy's eyes. Set up, go, let it run, coach. Back it up, coach. When we run seam route, and it's very important that your wide receivers and tight ends understand this, 
when we run a seam route, it stem outside and then come back inside. Okay? So you stem outside and then come back inside. Watch the stem. Go. Boom. Can you stick that foot in the ground? Cross your space. What is the number one rule of defensive back? Don't get me to cross space. We not only beat him, we put him in the end zone. Okay? Now, I'm going to answer this question before somebody asks. Isn't there one more play on there? Okay. Okay. Mmm. Stop. Okay. What are y'all getting ready to tell me, coach? First question. Can you only do this against high school players? Surely this would not work in the NFL. But you know what is the common denominator between NFL players and high school players? They are human. And humans have predictable behavior. I never took one psychology class, but as I watched hours and hours and hours and hours of game film, I will guarantee you, I watch as much game film as any coach in any league. One thing I noticed is everybody has similar behavior. And one behavior is, is that when you threaten me, I'm going to react. Okay? And that's predictable behavior. And I don't care what league, run it forward. Okay, stop. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on Josh Norman, who is one of my all time favorite players. I want it on record. I saw him at Coastal Carolina play both sides of a smash concept. Any corners in here? Yeah. yeah, I met some corners early. What do we do with a corner? We run a hitch, right? And then we do what? We bring some men behind. That's called a high-low read. We high-low the corner. If the corner bites on the, the low, we throw what? Yeah. When, when they go low, we go high. I ain't gonna get political on you. When they go high, we go low. low. Okay, and you gotta stay committed to that quarterback because that's your read. Okay, now this is a high-low read that's called a sideline read, okay? You're gonna get a release outside and down the sideline, and then you're gonna get a receiver threaten. The easiest way to run it, and it's called basic, is to run this receiver to the sideline, and then if he reacts to that guy, then you throw the whole shot if he fails with the go route, you throw the sideline route and you take whatever you can get. Now watch what the Saints and Drew Brees do, okay? Stop, coach. Okay, look at the formation first. How many receivers? Empty. Empty. Five wide, okay? Now, now here, here's what the Saints do that is so dastardly. Run it forward and watch the motion. Just pumped to the flat. So what did that do? 
Look right here. What do you see? Where are his cleats? On his This little breeze said, Pum! What did that do to a couple, couple of corn who knows looking at it? Because what is the corner? What do you teach the corners? Three step drop, right? Or in the gun, one and a half, balls coming out. Running forward. Touchdown. Okay. Now, some people. Hey, I love all these guys, man. I, I tell you what, I have seen every one of these guys on the field come in and get their first helmet. I, I used to go down there every year. So I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm just showing you that fundamental football works in high school and in college. Is this the same route? No, this is something different. Go back to the beginning. Okay? All right, running forward. And guys, you can look at this film. Stop. You can look at this film on NFL.com. I think it's well worth it for you to sign up for the NFL Pass. Ask your parents to do that because you can get film like this. And you can watch game film from the pros. All right? So let's watch it again. Okay? Wait a minute. Stop. Okay, if he's in cover two, whose responsibility is anything? Safety. The safety. Okay, run it forward. He's on the hatch, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Stop. How, I mean, he jumped outside, but how quickly can he go help here? See that whole quarterback? Mm -hmm. See that whole quarterback? Okay, run it back again. All right, how could a corner, let's play, let's coach defense now because this is my team. How could this corner help that safety? Okay, running forward, push him inside, we all in agreement. Three outside releases. Okay, run it back. See, y'all see how it's like CSI Miami? Okay, there's a fingerprint on this dining room table. Whose is it? Who's responsible for this travesty, okay? Now, why did the safety get over the help one? Because this guy run a route right in his face, okay? He's watching the quarterback who controls him. He makes a forced outside release. That, that's why we're running flood and we're running anything that requires a go route from the number one receiver. We have a forced outside release because we want to separate Go back to what I said earlier. We want to separate him from him. If I take the easy route and go in here, guess what? Pass breakup. If I go out here, he's got to run a long way. Run it forward. Hey, can you stop right there? Yeah, stop, coach. Hey, how would you say this? You're the strong safety at the bottom, right? Free safety at the top, so we have the strength. Strong safety at the strength, right? So that guy went in motion. How about the instruction? I know what, I, I think this is what you're saying, Coach. Okay, now there's only one guy threatening the, the, the side of the defense. So we go man. This is our best cover guy. Okay, we pull him toward the middle of the field. Huh? Right? He's allowed to go out, and then that allows him to always stay over top of that route because run the, run the play again. Stop. Okay. Let me, let me say one thing real quick. How dangerous is he? Huh? What, what, what? What guy? What is that? The bounce. He's the most dangerous. Yeah, most dangerous. Yeah, yeah, but between these two. Between these two. If he catches the ball, we rally and make the tackle. If, what's that right there? Can these three guys get to here and make that tackle before he gets there? Yes. Okay, so he's the most dangerous. So what I look for is, does a corner bite to the underneath stuff? Because then I can, 
it's a whole shot. That's all I'm saying as an offensive guy. So <coughs> the way we will play this week, and we rotate, right? The way we play banjo, inside guy will pass over. At that, right? Probably the inside receiver. And we rotate over. Who would be in the alley? That safety would slide over to the alley. On the numbers, he'd be right on the numbers, right? So he would take whichever shot came into that zone. Who would have the deep man when he outside release? Okay, so if we roll a cover three, and I know I'm coaching defense, but I hope y'all get something out of this. Okay, if I'm a cover three corner, where is my help? You are your help. You're there. This, this little thing right here. What's that? So I, I know I'm teaching defense. I apologize to all you defensive coaches, but here again, I study defenses as much as I study offenses. So if I have a give him an outside release, I better make sure his butt is over here eating popcorn and not threatening my defense. I better push his butt all the way to the Gatorade. As I, as I, and I look terrible playing defense at that. So I gave him the release. Now I acquire him, and I do what? I continually squeeze him. Okay, let's put that on the other side, receiver. What do you not allow the defensive back to do? Push you up against the boundary. So see, we're sitting here watching one play. How many people on both sides of the ball have learned something today? All right, now, uh, I need you to go back to the first start of the slide. Go ahead. All the way, you mean the approach? Right there, right there. Okay. Okay. In this scheme, offensive line, in this scheme, inside receiver is in on the blitz. Inside receiver, the one that's lining right there, is part of the blitz package in the blitz pickup. So what happens is, that is a Lewis call. He's sliding the whole line to the left. That means that tackle got to take the guy over the guard. Guard has to take the guy that's in A gap front side. The center got the guy back side A. The guard got the guy back side B. And the back side tackle got the guy outside. So they take everybody up. Now you can do one of two things with that first receiver. Either that inside receiver goes hot right now and you're pushing off the two verticals and he's coming straight out to the flat and he's going to catch that because they don't cover the, if they don't cover the vertical, then you got the inside guy chasing that flat right now. Or you can keep them in the protection, which is what they do. They keep them in the protection. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? I mean, six guys. We have six on six. We got to have them a half. So Bruce Juno needs protection. Now he's going to use his, the way he throws his feet and throw him to take him hit to manipulate the second. Slide, always slide away from the release guy. And that young man and I talked about this out on the field. Okay? We can have whatever we want here, okay, from the defense. But at this point, communication will say, I, you know, we could have all kind of calls, coach. We got we got tons of calls. You got calls from the NFL. When chip when push comes to shove, let's speak plain English. You okay with that, coach? All right. Because I would say, man, man, I got 50, I got 58, you got 59, you got 98, 99, okay? Is that Greg Hart? I can't remember. Who was that? Uh, you know, but you call out the numbers and everybody divvy it up and make sure that our five block who? Their five. Their five. And then that tight end staying in block six. And in this scenario, the quarterback has got number seven. All right. Guys, I drove all the way down here today. Because y'all said, coach said, guys have told me we want to win a championship. Okay? How many guys feel like they got a leg up on the competition today? Coaches? Okay. Your film study. Go back to the first slide. Very first slide. This film study is building from the ground up. 
Everything you do starts with the running game. Everybody's looking at their running game going, okay, now what are the other possibilities? Study the game. You have no excuse. We have huddle on our phones, okay? We have computers. Everybody have computers? Laptops? Apples? Macs? Windows? There's no excuse. You do not have to go get the film. The film is always with you. If I had that when I was a player, I, I probably would, I don't know, I won't say this, but I'd have been had a lot better chance to make it to the NFL. Okay? And once those guys get in the league, let me tell you the, the caveat to that story. I guarantee you, you can go see the film for the next how many other games the Panthers had in that season, and you will never see that happen again. That's what being a pro is all about. You don't hang your head. You do what? You go get the, huh? You go get the, you go get the, say it loud, so I can You go get the film because the film don't lie. The film don't lie. Enjoy being here. God bless you guys. Is there, is there any questions? Build it from the ground up. Yes, physically. Got to have a good base, right? But mentally, start with the eyes. Start with the eyes. How many guys in those that film that we saw today had bad eyes, dirty eyes? Huh? If your eyes are in the wrong place, guess what coaches like me are going to do? Take advantage of it. Everything you do on the offensive line requires eyes. I'm down in my stance over the ball. I'm doing what? What's in front of me? Shake to the left. Three tech to the right. Okay, slide. Rambo. You're going to slide to the right. Starts with the eyes and everything you do on the play finishes. Because your eyes tell the brain. I mean, your brain tells the body what to do, but your eyes tell the brain what's going on. And guess what happens? The eyes tell the a lie. What does the body do? Hey, what does the body do? Oops. Like we saw that safety from the high school. His eyes were like, okay, I'm blind. We scoring. Right. Y'all know the time in my room right here, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, I'm going to pass it over to Big Coach. Love you, brother. Love you. Appreciate you. All right, so let me, let me explain to you. Two other positions in football, the discipline and this one. That's the two hardest positions in football, especially on this level. You know who made this slide, Charles? Telling you which way to slide. So I guarantee when you broke the huddle, if these two guys are back, 58 is right here. And his agent, he was over here in the grill trying. 59 is Keith, he right here. They came out of the cover with what we call a Louis Shaw. To them, it's a short set. 300 pass. 300 and 200. He came out the huddle, he saw 200, which means they slide away from the number. So those three, that's those three. The center can't see everything walked up. He's looking for 58. He don't know if there's another guy in that box or not. So he's talking for a full slide. This 
brother stopped repeating the same thing. Is there anybody out here? So he's out here, right? So we got to put a hat on a hat going back that way. Our numbers are here. He's part of the group. From the check, he got one, two, three guys out here. Now, because he's a part of the blitz, he has a number. They outnumber the inside. Immediately, when this guy right here, when the center told him down, 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 full slot, you know he's part of protection. He's close enough that he can hear that. So the first thing, he's gonna call a slot. He's blocking back. His guard is calling gap, 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 gap. It becomes a full slot. Now, when he calls gap, that means he got to take that A gap. He's got to come down, and we're turning him loose. So this guy's sitting there saying, well, they all turning loose. <coughs> we got three on four. My right there. So his read is this. When I start this motion, how many guys come over? That's the quarterback read. Because in this read, in the NFL, if they both come over, I'm going to read this man right here. Because he better be a dog. Yeah. He over there in the field by himself. All he has to do is get over. But it all started communication skills. You understand? Receivers running. 
under deep in the deep cover. I have no clue. And when we got sacked, I'm looking at the line of scrimmage. We ran five wide deep, and they got on the headset and said, Coach Graham, what happened? And I said, I looked right back down the sideline, and I said, you only kept five in the block and threw it deep, and they brought seven. Do the math on that. How many unblocked guys were there? So did that play on the team? And from that point forward, I said, I will become the coordinator, and I will never put myself in that position. Even if I run four verts on this particular pass here, I'm going to have that little bounce or orbit or whatever you call it. And that's a great play, Coach. I won't show you that when we get up there. But when we run orbit, that orbit is harder to read. So you can run the four vert, but know for a fact, the read is if 24 sink, throw away. Behind, to, the, to, the, to the flat. And if 24 comes down, throw the whole shot. Let's all run down there, get our picture in the paper, celebrate, and move in. Now, the big thing when you were in the line was the most impact in terms of drop back. Your first time around, you took a snap here, out here, and still got to go to play. Oh, yeah. And as you build, as you build plays, that, that motion to the, is the same as a flat line. A bubble screen is the same as a flat line.